Stone. We are so excited you chose to worship with us today. Whether you are here in person or joining us online, we cannot wait to worship with you today. Be sure to fill out our communication card, whether it's your first time or you've been here for years. This will help us to stay connected with you. Plus, if you do this and it's your first time, we'll make a $5 donation to COVID-19 response in your honor you can make a difference with your first visit. At Greystone Church, giving is such an incredible way to worship, and we make it very convenient for you. You can mail a check, give online, give at the kiosk, text to give, or put your tithe in the box in the back. Because of your giving, we're able to support many local outreach groups, such as Athens Pregnancy Resource Center. With your giving, we are helping them make a life-changing impact on countless of lives. So thank you for your giving. If you have a middle or high school student, during each of our services, we have a special student service in the aquarium room, which is to the right as you walk out the door on the side of the auditorium. This is a special time here for your students to be able to hang out with their friends, listen to the message, and be in small groups during the service. So go ahead, students, and get up and enjoy an awesome student service. Families, we are thrilled that you are here in person joining us for worship. We want to encourage you to check your child into our amazing children's area that is cleaned after each use with volunteers that are ready to love your child while you worship. If you choose to have your child in the service and they start having a meltdown or making too much noise, which as a mom of three I know happens from time to time, Please be considerate of the people around you and the pastor teaching because we stream the service to our other campuses and hundreds of people watching online. We also have a family space at each campus just for you and your child that's ready for you to continue to join us for service. Thank you for worshiping with us. I cannot wait to see what God has in store for us today. Good morning, Greystone. Why don't you go ahead and stand your feet with me? We get to sing to God this morning, tell him how excited we are to be here. So come on, let's sing this together. Let's get honest with him this morning about what we feel.
mom we sing got a mom and knees again god i'm begging please again i need you oh i need you walking down this desert road water for my thirsty soul i need you oh church. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. Hope you guys are doing great. I hope you, man, it's great to see you guys here in this room, in this building. How's everybody doing? Say good. Good? Good. That's good. I heard a whoop. Oh, that's great. That's great. Listen, um, a lot of football happening this week. Okay, got an oh yeah. Good, good. Okay, everybody else is, all right. Welcome to church, all right? So uh, my name's Josh. I'm the Azor Campus Pastor. Uh, man, we've got a lot of people in the room, but uh, you also who are watching online, thank you guys so much for joining in. I don't know where you are, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, today's service is gonna be super exciting. I'm excited to see how God's going to move. And so uh, I, I wanted to, there's a few of them left back in the back, talk notes uh, there. And if you're online, talk notes are, are there as well online uh, and on our social media. But uh, today is something really special we haven't done in a while, 
after this service, we have a thing called Newcomer's Lunch. And if you've been before, you don't have to go again, but I wanna invite you, uh, if you are like, man, what is this church all about? This is why we do Newcomer's Lunch. The last one we had was in March. So the ginger's pumped, I'm excited, you know? So uh, this is a way for you to know what's going on at, at Grace Stone. We're gonna have lunch, we'll have childcare. Uh, so I'm excited about it to see how God's gonna do it. It's about an hour long, so you're welcome to be a part of that. Uh, we're, st- we're continuing in this series called DIY for the Soul. And Jonathan's been, been in it. I'm excited to hear what he has to say today. Uh, but uh, we've been following along with this guy named David Isaac Young, DIY for short. And we're gonna, we've been journeying with him a little bit. So I'm, I'm interested to see where he is. So check out this video. Hey, what's up guys? David Isaac Young, DIY for short. Today is renovation day. It's time to get rid of that old nasty moldy TV, that gross dresser table, whatever that was. We're throwing them out and bringing in the new. All right, this nasty thing, I don't even really want to touch it, but it's got to go. Ah! Oh, God! Ah! All right, now, second thing that's got to go, this nasty dresser. It's time to get out of here. All right, well, we fixed that problem. Brand new flat screen TV, pretty new entry piece, out with the old, in with the new. All right, how's everybody doing? It's good to see the Azura campus is here. Let me say hello to the Walton campus, the Oconee campus, everybody who's watching online. You guys, are y'all excited that college football has started? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to be talking as much about college football this year because the LSU Tigers are, are in for a long season, I'm afraid. I've told Andre, I'm, ju- I'm jumping on with the Canes. Go Canes. I'm, ju- I'm jumping on the Canes bandwagon. So, well, well I'll get some booze over here, Andre. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just it's exciting to, uh, you know, college football's back, and, and so things are beginning to get more back to normal. I, I talked to many people today who are back for the first time after, since March, so it's nice to see people trickling back to church as well, so isn't that good? So, so we're, in the, we're in the middle of this series called DIY for the Soul, and we're talking about caring for the most important part of our lives, which is our souls, and we're relating it to a home renovation project, a do-it-yourself project. And ultimately, like, we, we want to help you care for your, for your soul. We want to do everything we can to get the resources into your hands. But ultimately, you have to take personal responsibility to care for your own soul. Like, we can't do it for you. Now, when it comes to home renovations, like, you can pay somebody else to run the electrical. You can pay somebody else to hang sheetrock. You can pay, pay somebody else to, to put in your floors or whatever. But when it comes to caring for your soul... It's your personal responsibility. Now, we've introduced this character, uh, David Isaac Young, DIY uh, for short. And the very first week, he buys a house sight unseen. And he goes in to look at the condition of the house, you know, what's good, what's bad, what needs fixing. And so the first week of our series, we, look, we looked at the condition of our souls. Like, what, how is your soul? And I want you to ask that question again today is, how is my soul? How is the most important part of me doing? Is my soul healthy? Or is it unhealthy? Is, is it damaged? Is it ruined? Is, does it need healing? And then last week, we, we talked about demo day. And David, David Isaac Young went in and, and demoed the house, you know, whatever's been is dated and hated, you know, it needs to be renovated. And so it was get out the old and get in the new. And so we looked at our souls. And we want to get sin out of our life. We want to root ourselves from sin. And anything's going to distract our relationship with Christ. And we ended the, the service last week with a time of confession. Confession is good for the soul. And so we're picking up the, the renovation project today where we've, we've, we've got everything out, but now we have to bring in the new. And so we're going we're gonna to put in some new flooring, we're going to put in new, new cabinets and countertops and some subway tile. And a lot of the ladies mentioned to me last week that I, I failed to mention that Joanna Gaines loves shiplap. Okay, so we're going to put some shiplap. We're going to have an accent wall of shiplap. But when it, when it comes to your soul, 
What does your soul need? We have some very needy souls. So I want to talk today four things. What do our souls need? The first is our souls need eternal life. Our souls need eternal life. Ecclesiastes 3.11, God has set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. It says that God has set eternity in the human heart. God has created our souls to live forever. Deep down, we all have this desire to want to live forever. Like, it, it, we're all born with it. You go, you go back to when, when you were a child, you've always had this desire to want to live forever. And God's the one who placed that desire into your heart, into your life. I think we all know there's more to life than simply living and dying. And at the end of our lives, it's not like we're a candle that just blows out and then it's over. God created us to live for all eternity. The soul cannot be satisfied by temporary earthly things. I remember as a kid growing up, I always felt like something was missing in my life. And if you were to look at my life from the outside looking in, you would have thought, well, he has, you know, he has everything. Like we had incredible parents uh, growing up, parents who loved me, who provided for me and and my little brother, we had a nice house that we lived in. When I got into high school, I had a car that I was able to drive. I made good grades. I played sports. I was in a high school fraternity, which I don't recommend being in a high school fraternity uh, for the kids. Okay, it was, it was kind of like Animal House, if you've seen uh, that movie. I kind of ran with the popular crowd. I like girls. Girls like me. Um, I had plenty of girlfriends. Actually, my brother had a lot more girlfriends than I had. In fact, back when I was in high school, we didn't have these things called cell phones like the kids have now. We had, we had a thing called a home phone. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there used to be like phones in the houses. And if someone wanted to get in touch with you, you had to actually had to be home in order to... But my brother was on the phone so much with, with his girlfriends that my parents put a separate line in for my brother. And, I, and ho hopefully he's watching. He, he knows it's true. He was, he was a Casanova uh, growing up. And then when I was in high school, our family uh, joined the local First Baptist Church, and I was baptized. And we started going to Sunday school and church every week. But my, my life never changed, and there was still something missing in my life. Pascal says, there's a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each, each man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the creator made known through Jesus Christ. Pascal says there's this God-shaped vacuum. Others have said there's a God-shaped void or there's this, there's this hole in our hearts that can only be filled with God. And so all of these worldly things, all of these earthly things, success, materialism, relationships, drugs, alcohol, sports, entertainment, vacations, none of these things satisfies the soul. Only God can satisfy the soul. Because God created us to live for all eternity, he put this desire for eternal life in our hearts. John 17, 3 says, now this is eternal life. You want to know what eternal life is? That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. And so eternal life is come to know Jesus. Eternal life is have an intimate, personal relationship with God. And so when I was in high school, if you looked at my life from the outside in, it looked like everything was going great. But on the inside, deep down within my soul, I knew that something was missing. And, and, I, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And long story short, I ended up going on a summer camp with, with the student ministry there at the church. And during the, the camp, they, they shared with us that, that God loved us, had a wonderful plan for our lives, and, and I knew that. They also shared with me that, that I was sinful, and I knew that I was sinful. I'd been in trouble, made, up, made all kinds of mistakes. Uh, and because of my sin, I was separated from God and deserved to go to a place called hell. And I said, time out, hang on a second. I've been to church, I've been baptized. I'm a pretty good person. And we can always find somebody else that we're, that we're better than, right? I and mean, there's always somebody else that's worse than us. What, what's the solution to this dilemma? 
And they share with me that Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the penalty for us. And that on the third day that, that uh, he rose from the grave and he conquered sin and he conquered death and he conquered hell. And, and we too, through, through faith in Jesus Christ, can conquer sin, conquer death, conquer hell and rise from the grave and spend eternity in heaven with God. And it was like a light bulb came on in my brain. Like, oh, it's like, I get it. Like, that's why we celebrate Easter. That, you know, and I remember putting my faith in Jesus Christ and, and he filled that void in my life. And if that's where you are today, and you know that something's still missing in your life, the solution is to put your faith and put your trust in Jesus because our souls need eternity. Number two, our souls need a savior. And, and I got into this a little bit, but Jesus is the only one who can fill the void in our lives. Jesus is the only one who can satisfy our souls. Psalm 62, 1 and 2 says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. God is the only one who can bring rest to our restless souls. Our salvation comes from him. Now, I mentioned this the first two weeks of, of this series but when Jesus is talking about our salvation, yes, he's talking about our eternal destination. We're saved from condemnation. We're saved from hell. We're going to heaven. But also he's talking about the condition of our souls. He saved our souls. He's pulled us out of the, the muck and the, the mire. It says, by his wounds we are healed. By his stripes we are, we are healed. Jesus is the one who heals our souls. Augustine said, you've made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Our souls are going to be restless until they find rest in God alone, which leads me to the third thing that our souls need, is our souls need to be with God. Our souls need to be with God. Our souls have this, this deep longing for God. Like, like our souls are crazy about God. Our souls are obsessed with God. Just as a Joanna Gaines is obsessed with shiplap, our souls are obsessed with God. We have this deep desire to want to be with God. Psalm 63, 1 says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In this parched and weary land where there is no water. Our souls are searching for God. We're, we're pursuing God. We're, we're wanting to spend time with him. Psalm 42, 1 and 2 says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? This is the desire of our, our souls is to spend time with God, to, to search for him, to pursue him, to, to spend time with him. And hopefully we, we all have the desire of the psalmist to wake up in the morning and spend time with God. As the deer thirsts for God, our souls are thirsting. As the deer thirst for water, our souls are thirsting for God. And the Bible is, is the story of God bringing us back to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And, and the story of the Bible is, is one of being with God. We, we begin in the, in the book of Genesis story of Adam and Eve, and it says that, that God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, that he walked with them, he spent time with, him, with them, he was, he was with them. God walked with Enoch. I don't know if you've heard of Enoch. There's only, there's only a couple verses in the Bible about Enoch, but it says that Enoch walked with God, and then he was no more. That Enoch walked with God, and God took him to heaven. Enoch's one of the, the two people in the Bible who, who never died. Enoch and, of course, the prophet Elijah. God walked with Noah. God was with Abraham, and God was with Isaac, and God was with Jacob. And then God was with Joseph. Even those looking from the outside in would think that God wasn't with Joseph because he was sold into slavery, and he spent, I believe it was 12 years in prison. But it says the whole time that God was with Joseph and God was with Moses and the Israelites as, as they wandered through the desert. 
And his presence was with them, a a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And God was with Joshua. God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And God was with his mighty warrior Gideon. And God was with Samuel and with Ruth and with David. And God was with all the people in the Old Testament, the presence of God. And then we move into the New Testament, and God's Son, Jesus Christ, is born of the Virgin Mary, Emmanuel, God with us. God in the flesh came to be with us. And he called his disciples to be with him, to, to follow him, to do apprenticeship under him. I, I, I shared this passage with our men's discipleship on Tuesday night, but John chapter 15 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And he talks about Jesus, talks about us remaining in Christ and abiding in Christ and being with him, being connected and being, being connected to him, being, being connected to the vine. And then after Jesus' death and resurrection, he sends into heaven and he sends the Holy Spirit to be with us. So the the story of of the Bible is a story uh, of God longing to be with us and our souls longing to be with God. And we should desire to walk with Him each day. The fourth thing that our souls need is our souls need restoration and replenishing. Restoring and replenishing. It says in Psalm 23, 1 through 3, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. What are the green pastures in your life that restore your soul? What are the, what are the still waters in your life that restore your soul? As I, as I was reading this passage, I was thinking, you know, King David's describing a golf course. The green pastures, the still waters. He doesn't mention the, the sand traps. I think sand traps are of the devil. Um, but our souls need replenishing. As we're followers of Jesus Christ, we're to live our lives as Jesus lived his life. And Jesus did several things to replenish his soul. One of those was prayer. It says that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Every time we pray, it's, pray, it's replenishing the soul. Uh, Jesus had close, like-minded friends. Jesus was always with the disciples. It's so important for us to have close, like-minded friends, people that we can do life with, uh, to fell- true biblical fellowship, a community of faith together. Regular corporate worship replenishes the soul. And we, we have pushed our worship back to the, to the end of the service as a time of worship and a time of response. When I'm leaving church now, I don't know about you, but my soul is replenished. It is, it is restored because of us gathering and worshiping God together. Feeding our minds on the Scripture is replenishing to the soul. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. Psalm 19, 7 says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. When we get into the Word of God and we read God's Word, it revives the soul. Enjoying God's creation revives the soul. We, we see the example of Jesus. He, was, he went to the gardens. He went on the mountaintops. He went to the, to the lake. I think it's a, it's a good argument, right, to get outdoors and enjoy God's creation. I think the beach revives the soul. Can I get an amen there? <laughs> Jesus took long walks. Jesus spent time in silence and Solitude. 
Jesus got away from the busyness of life, and it's so good for us to, to turn off the phones and turn off the TV and turn off the everything and just sit in silence and, and solitude to revive the soul. You know, all, all of these spiritual disciplines, a lot of times Christian think, Christians think they're like this spiritual to-do list, like, well, I did my scripture memory, I, I did my prayer, I, I did my quiet time, I, I went to small group, I, you know, I went to church. It's like we're, we're checking off this list of things that we have to do to be a good Christian. They're not things we have to do to be a good Christian, they're things we get to do. It's not a burden to spend time with God, it's a joy. It replenishes the soul. Every, every time we get into the Word, every, every time we come to worship, every, every time we're in small group, it, it's replenishing the soul. As we walk with God each day, our souls are being renewed. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but our bodies are wasting away. Like our outward bodies, I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more my body's falling apart. My back's hurt right now. I, I tried to lift something the other, other day that I, that I shouldn't be lifting. I'm recovering from knee surgery. My, my elbow is, is killing me. Every time I go to play tennis, I'm popping Advil like candy and I'm putting CBD lotion on various parts of my body. Like it's not a pretty sight. And I used to give my dad a hard time because uh, my dad's in his 80s and he's, he still plays tennis. But when he's getting ready to go play tennis, his bag is so full of stuff, it's like he's going on a weekend camping trip. And I used to give him a hard time, but, but I'm becoming my dad, right? It now looks like I'm camping for the weekend when I go play tennis. The Apostle Paul says that our bodies are temporary, that our bodies are earthen vessels, that our bodies are jars of clay. But then he follows that up in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. He says, therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly you are wasting away, yet inwardly you are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is is eternal. We renew our souls. We replenish our souls by focusing our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. By focusing on those things that last for all eternity. And when we're living our lives, we're investing our lives in the things that last for all eternity, that is replenishing to the soul. So what lasts forever? Like when, it, when it's all said and done, what's going to last forever? There's three, there are three things. God is one. God lasts forever. God is eternal. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of God lasts forever. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord stands forever, endures forever. So God, his word, and then what, we, what we've been talking about the last few weeks is our souls. The souls of men, women, students, and children. We're to live our lives in such a way that God would use us to change somebody else's life for all eternity. Those are the things that last forever. Everything else is temporary. Everything else is going to rust. Everything else is going to decay. Everything else is going to, to burn. And we invest our lives in the things that last forever. Jesus says we're storing up treasures in heaven. We're sending it on ahead of us. Matthew 6, 19 to 21 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Also, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our souls long for heaven. Our souls are longing to be with God. 
Focusing our lives on the things that last forever. That's the deep need of the soul. The application today is very simple. It's to set our hearts and minds on things above. To set our hearts and our minds on the things that last forever. Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You know, we get so focused on the things of this earth, we get so focused on temporary things that, that aren't going to last. And it's damaging to our souls. But the Apostle Paul instructs us, set your minds on things above. Set your hearts on the things above. And as we move into a time of response, as we move into a time of worship, I want to encourage us. Let's take this time to focus on things above. To focus on things that last for all eternity. To, to set our hearts, to set our minds, to, to make sure we're living our lives for what truly matters. Those things that are going to last for all eternity. All right, let me pray for us. God, I thank you for placing eternity into each of our hearts. I thank you that we all know that you created us for more than this life, that our souls were created to live forever. And we all have this deep desire to want to live for all eternity. God, I pray if there's anyone here, anyone watching, who feels like something is still missing in their lives, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray today would be the day that they put their faith and put their trust in what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for them. That Jesus would come into their life and, and he would fill that void and he would satisfy their souls. God, as we move into a time of worship and we, we move into a time of response, God, help us to set our minds and set our hearts on the things above. As we begin a new week, help us to commit this first day of the week for you and make sure, God, that we are living our lives for what truly matters, the things that are going to last for all eternity. We pray this in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is a great message, by the way. Pastor, thank you so much. I hope that this uh, spoke to us in such a deep way uh, that, uh, and as he mentioned, we're, we, we're, we got the service done a little bit uh, differently transitional-wise, Tom. So what we're going to do is we're going to respond. We're going to respond. We have multiple options for you. You can totally sit there and stand there or kneel on your knees, you know, uh, whatever. However you want to respond as the music is getting ready to start. Let me kind of go through those responses, those, those options. Over here in the corner, there's going to be a few people who, uh, who would love to pray for you. Uh, some of our staff, some of our elders, like they're, they're going to love to come up here. Some of our prayer team's going to come up here and uh, feel free. You may not know them. They may not know you, but uh, they would love to pray for you if you have something going on. Right here at this table, uh, there is a, a chest. Uh, we call in our, we're calling our hope chest. And there's some index cards with some pins. If you're like, man, I've been praying for something for so long. And you want to write it down and put it in the hope chest and faith between you and God, go do that. Over here to my left, to your right, there are small little things of uh, communion, uh, wafers and small juice. Maybe it's something you want to do with your family and say, we want to remember what Christ has done for us on the cross. Maybe take it back to your seat. There's, some, there's a trash can there and in the lobby, put that in there if you don't mind. But they'll get alone between you and God to say, man, I'm, I'm, I'll remember you, Jesus. And do this in remembrance. You laid your life down for us. And then over here on the right-hand side, uh, there is a cross Maybe you want to go to the cross and kneel down. Maybe you want to go over there and just say, man, uh, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. You're no longer there. You're alive. You're risen. And there is hope. Maybe that's something for you. And then there on, on every exit door, there's an offering box. Uh, please put this communication card uh, in there. And then along with, maybe, it's, maybe you want to give uh, your tithe and offering. Uh, everything we own is God's. Uh, there's no pressure if you're brand new to, to give today. But maybe this is something, okay, you want to do that. Maybe you want to do all of them. 
you overachievers in the room. I don't know. The most important thing is you having your alone time with God. Like this is a time of response. Everything that Jonathan said can mean nothing if there's something that's in us to apply to say, God, we're in this moment of surrender. Have us have everything we have. So let me pray for us. Here we go. God, I just ask that you would continue to do a work like only you can do. Lord, last couple of weeks, uh, there's this, been this emphasis on the soul, DIY for the soul. God, we can plan, we can structure, we can have systems, we can do all these things, but if we do not have your presence in our life, we don't genuinely have you, God. None of all of it's vain. And so I just pray in this moment, God, as the band sings just three songs, God, I pray that you would do a work in us. We would lay aside what's for lunch later on or what other plans are there are this afternoon. But in this moment, either online or in person, God, help us to just dive into you and surrender it all to you. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and stand. Sing this out together. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your head is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me.
Oh man, the band has one more. All right, no, that was that was awesome. Oh my gosh. Hey, so listen, I don't want to interrupt what God's doing. So if if you're still in need of prayer, if someone's if someone likes going through something, we would love as a staff to pray with you. Uh, I don't know what's going on in your life, but please don't leave here without uh, God doing you doing what you need to do before you leave the room. Okay. Uh, that being said, what I want to do is I want to pray for us. So just stay stay standing one more uh, just for a little bit. Uh, those of you who kind of came in late, we have something that we haven't done in several months. It's called Newcomers Lunch. If you're new to Graystone, I am inviting you to come. We'll have lunch, we'll have child care, those things are taken care of. It'll be about an hour after this service in the auditorium. So for those of you who are registered, you guys can stay in here uh, and uh, we'll transform everything. This allows you to know a little bit more of our church, love our staff, and a possible uh, way for you to uh, join our church. I'd love for you guys to hear about Newcomers Lunch. Uh, and then last but not least, guys, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, Man, I'm excited to see what God's going to do as a result of what's happening already. So let me pray for us, okay? God, thank you so much for moving, Father. I just pray over all of us in the room, even those of us who are watching online, Father. God, your spirit is so freeing. And God, I just pray that whatever, whatever, whatever things that people are going through, I know there's such hectic and craziness that's happening in all of our lives, our calendars are full. God, help us to fight to make time for you, Jesus. Help us to make sure that we're fighting with every fiber of our being to spend time with you. And if there's anybody in the room who doesn't know Jesus, may they not leave without knowing they can have a personal relationship with Jesus. So thank you guys. Thank you, God, for all that you do, all you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you guys are dismissed. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us today. If you have heard these announcements at the start of the service, you're dismissed. And if you miss them, here they are again. Be sure to fill out our communication card, whether it's your first time or you've been here for years. This will help us to stay connected with you. Plus, if you do this and it's your first time, we'll make a $5 donation to COVID-19 response. In your honor, you can make a difference with your first visit. At Greystone Church, giving is such an incredible way to worship. And we make it very convenient for you. You can mail a check, give online, give at the kiosk, text to give or put your tithe in the box in the back. Because of your giving, we're able to support many local outreach groups, such as Athens Pregnancy Resource Center. With your giving, we are helping them make a life-changing impact on countless of lives. So thank you for your giving. If you have a middle or high school student, during each of our services, we have a special student service in the aquarium room, which is to the right as you walk out the door on the side of the auditorium. This is a special time here for your students to be able to hang out with their friends, listen to the message, and be in small groups during the service. So go ahead, students, and get up and enjoy an awesome student service. Families, we are thrilled that you are here in person joining us for worship. We want to encourage you to check your child into our amazing children's area that is cleaned after each use with volunteers that are ready to love your child while you worship. If you choose to have your child in the service and they start having a meltdown or making too much noise, which as a mom of three I know happens from time to time, please be considerate of the people around you and the pastor teaching because we stream the service to our other campuses and hundreds of people watching online. We also have a family space at each campus just for you and your child that's ready for you to continue to join us for service. Thank you for coming to Greystone this morning, whether online or in person. We are praying for you and we will see you next week.